Pursuant to, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general laws, chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 and March 23rd, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the town of Southampton select board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to view this meeting while in progress may do so by going to zoom.us forward slash join, hit join a meeting in the top right of your screen type in the meeting ID, which is 761-904-3998 and hit join. Please be sure to mute your device when joining in. Note to join in video meeting with cell phone, you will need to download the Zoom app from the app store or by watching public access TV, Charter Spectrum channel 191. In-person attendance and public comment at select board meetings will be suspended until further notice. If you email a written public comment before the scheduled select board meeting, it will be read at the, that select board meeting. If you email a written public comment after viewing something at a live televised select board meeting, it will be read at the next select board meeting. Please send your public comments via email to selectmen at townofsouthampton.org. Please note that all public comments must be written within the requirements of the policy on public comments listed in the open time for the public on the select board agenda. Okay, thank you, Ed. Okay, this, uh, this begins the um, select board meeting, um, March 31st, uh, 2020. And so just to start off by saying, I hope everybody in Southampton is staying safe and um, isolated. Um, We'll go ahead and conduct this meeting, but first we're just going to, um, in unison, um, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America. And, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so we have a section obviously on the agenda for uh, COVID updates, but uh, so we'll get to that. Obviously that's about the most importance. Uh, the first is the um, appointment to the Conservation Commission. And Chris, if you have the information, I'll invite you to actually um, introduce the um, applicant. Sure, thank you. Okay, this is for the appointment of Anna Breen to the Conservation Commission. And this would be to fill the expired term of Matt Fletcher uh, for a term to begin on April 9th, 2020, and to expire on June 30th, 2022. Um, so this would be filling out Matt's term, uh, sorry, uh, Matt had, Matt's term had expired. And so this is filling out uh, basically until June of 2022. Uh, Anna is a new resident to town. She's uh, been involved uh, with the She's a health professional right now, but she's been involved with the Vermont Conservation Corps uh, way back as a youth and has done a lot of trail work in the past. And so we're looking forward to her uh, joining the commission. Excellent. Everybody got the paperwork and also her resume. Um, mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions for Chris or anybody else? No, I don't. No. no? Okay. Um, would someone like to make a motion then? Hey, Rini. Yep. Uh, can I make a suggestion, uh, and you probably have thought of it, but if we make these motions, can we do them all by roll call so people out there can identify us? Right. I think we're supposed to do it anyway by roll yeah. call. Yeah. Over a moment. So, yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, <laughs> yep. So would somebody like to make a motion? I move, I move to approve Anna Breen to the Conservation Commission. That's I'll second it. Okay. Then a roll call vote. Falls aye. Roland I. Tishman I. Martin I. And Groden I. Thank you, everyone. Now, Chris, does that um, leave any openings currently on Conservation Commission? No, I believe that fills us up with the other two people that we uh, um, appointed a couple of weeks ago, uh, Dan LaValle and um, 
um, Mike Reed. Uh, so this would be our third vacancy, and this this carries us forward, I believe, right now. Great. That, and, um, that concurs with the official records. Okay. And are you having meetings um, remotely or by Zoom? They will be having a meeting. ComCom is scheduled to have a meeting April 13th. Um, they went ahead and, and got their own subscriptions just because they had to have it ahead of time. Uh, just for one month, they got a one month subscription so they can put out the notice of public hearings that they're required uh -huh. to do well ahead of the meeting. So okay. they needed that, but they're looking forward to having town access to Zoom uh, for their May meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, then the next is uh, no hearings, so the reports. I don't know that anybody's had any meetings, uh, but select board reports, and if not, town administrator report. And actually, all of mine will come under the COVID-19 update. Okay, then we'll move hey. right along then, unless somebody has another um, suggestion. Then Chris, you want to yeah. do the... Okay, okay. yeah, sure. Sorry, uh, Master Plan uh, did meet last night and remotely. Uh, we were hosted by the PVPC consultant. Uh, and so we spent time talking about how we would approach the idea of uh, doing a community survey, especially in these times, uh, and spent time looking at the questions of the last survey that was done more than seven years ago to figure out which ones might still be valid questions to put in a new survey and which ones could be tweaked. Um, but we felt that there was still some merit in doing a community survey. So we've got some ideas along that line that we'll be working on, but we'll try to meet maybe once a month, depending on everybody's schedules. Okay, was there a good participation in the meeting uh, remotely? Yes, we had uh, uh, five out of our seven members there. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> my, my dog just came in the room and opened the door all by herself. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, a cat may stroll by, so just give it everybody a heads up. <laughs> believe she can open that door that's pretty challenging <laughs> <laughs> anyway any other reports besides master plan yeah no okay then we're on to um old business a shared building commissioner update john uh do you want to do this open or you want to do this in executive well, well the, 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 yeah. the, con the contract would be an executive but do we have any updates on yeah. the agreement? Let me, okay, let me do that then. So worked on the agreement last week. Uh, what I ended up doing is taking one similar to what we have now with one of the other department heads, uh, putting in all the pertinent information to the building commissioner, uh, ran it by Ed, he uh, made some edits. So I took the, his edits, then I took a draft copy and sent it to our building commissioner yesterday morning. Uh, and asked him to take a look at it. And he said he would. And I asked him to get back to me uh, on it, but he hasn't yet. So he's he's re-looking at it. Him and I had talked originally, and he had some thoughts on what he liked, and I had some thoughts on what we were able to do. So I'm sure he's going over and comparing now, but I don't have anything right now. But I can go into the details of what I put in the executive session. Okay. So, so basically, I'm waiting for him to get back to me with his comments. Okay, and that's Tom you mean, right? Tom you said, right? Correct. Okay, any, any, any questions for John about the uh, position itself? No. Okay, I think we uh, all agreed and I think Matt also chimed in that it was a great job putting it all together and hopefully we can um, retain a you know, good employee that we've had and formalize what um, has more or less already been going on. So if there's nothing else um, under um, that topic, then we'll talk about any, any updates on the East Street Bridge? We lost Ed. Uh, Ed. Ed just went to his office real quick, I think. Okay, the last update that we had was that um, the, um, uh, the state was actually sending it to a third party reviewer. Uh, the plans and I didn't hear anything. I don't think anybody else did that there's been any change and that was actually pretty recent. So we'll check with him when he comes back. Uh, should we go on then to the remote participation of members at public meetings? Sure. 
Now, Chris, you and Ed had worked on this initially, and I think we actually addressed it last week. Um, and I think it was going to be sort of formalized. Was it KP that took a look at it or uh, was it reviewed further after last week's meeting? I don't believe, I don't know that KP took a look at it. Um, I saw the, you know, the draft that Ed sent out, which incorporated the two or three small changes that we made at the last, uh, the last meeting. So that looks complete based on what we discussed last meeting. Okay. I think we added, at John's request, we added a couple of specific language as opposed to just referring to uh, you know, the law, so to speak. So does anybody have any questions about the um, remote participation um, document? No. How would, how would we go about signing it and approving it as such? Is it, are we delegating to Ed or? Well, I think that, I think that we can just go ahead and approve it. And um, yeah. if we have to sign it, then um, we'll just um, individually sign it or e-sign it, either one. Or we can each, can, or we can each sign it and get them into Ed, and he'll have five signature sheets instead of one. Does yeah, that count? Yeah. yeah, and and then when this is over, we can get the wet signatures on okay. one page of it. Okay. Okay. So Ed, I don't know if you heard what we said, but we basically were okay with it. It seems like the only changes were the couple that were suggested last time. Is there any other changes that you're aware of? No, those were the only changes that I uh, made to it, Rainy. Okay. So does somebody want to make a motion then to approve it? I I'll make a motion. I'll second it. It sounded like John and Chris. Right. right. Correct. Okay. So uh, any other discussion or questions? No. All right. Then all those in favor, roll call vote. Fowles aye. Tishman aye. Roland aye. Martin aye. Broden aye. All right, thanks. Now that we're participating remotely, it's good to have that <laughs> signed <laughs> off on. So Ed, what do you want us to do in terms of signing it? Do you want us to just, can we e-sign it and just email it back to you? Yeah, what I'll do, I'll do is uh, I'll s send out the, uh, the document with the page and you can each, uh, whether you e-sign it or print it and sign it and scan it back to me and I'll put that together. And when this is all over and we can have physical contact again, uh, then we'll put the wet signatures on it. Uh -huh. So Ed, a, a question for you. Do we have access to DocuSign or something similar so that we could uh, uh, send it around for all of us in succession? Uh, not that I'm aware of, John. Okay, because that would be ideal. We may want to look into that. I don't, I don't, a license, and I'm trying to remember, a license was like $200 last time I looked into it, but I believe it's gone down quite a bit. And you only need one license for sending it out, say, through a town hall to all of us. So if that's yeah, something. Doc, if that's DocuSign something, would be great. Yeah, I use DocuSign. If that's something you want me to look at, Ed, let me know if you don't have time, but I'll be. I'll be glad to look into it. Okay, thanks. John, that's a one-time payment or is that annual? Annual payment. But, you know, for that kind of price, especially nowadays. And just, just to be clear for anybody who's watching who didn't follow this last week, that this remote participation guideline is basically for when we do get back to normal and we do have quorums in place, et cetera. So we're still working out, right, what we're going to do going forward now with the Zoom meeting. This is our first Zoom meeting. Right. Right. Correct. Okay, so we're clear. We're just going to send it back to Ed, either uh, sign, uh, print, sign, scan, send back, or e-sign and send back. And that's either one is just as good, Ed? Yes. Okay. All we'll right. So Ed, all right. You all set, Ed? Yes, I am. Well, while you were out of the room, uh, on the agenda did uh, have an update on East Street Bridge. Um, is there anything new? No, uh, actually, actually, BHB reached out to me on uh, Friday and let me know that they had still not had heard anything back from uh, Mass DOT uh, and the peer, peer review and that the 30-day window on that was just about up. So whether 
non-essential this closure of non-essential business has anything to do with that or not but VHB is trying to find out what they can and get back to us on it okay so we're just it's, waiting for that we're waiting for that before they can move forward at all right correct because they would want to yeah. take and incorporate any of any suggestions uh, or requirements from mass DOT into that 95% design plan and then they would send it out for uh, once they have that they'd send it out for um, the permitting whether that's for our own conservation uh, committee permitting or uh, or uh, uh, or state permitting that's required well it sounds like it's gonna be held up one way or another, right? Well, I mean, once it depends on how this all plays out. I mean, construction itself seems at this point in time uh, to still be allowed to go on, but uh, we would need all those comments back, then we'd go out to bid. So I'm guessing that even with all that, that uh, yeah. the actual physical construction wouldn't start until probably July or August. So. Uh, hope, hopefully we'll be out of all those uh, current sanctions. Okay. Um, hey, Ma Maureen? Yep. I just want to ask a question. I'm, I'm trying to toggle back and forth between the agenda and seeing you folks. Can you see me right now? No. No. I can't, no. no. But I can't see anybody. You can't. Uh, okay, no, so I'm, I have I'm, to be on that screen to see you. Yes. You're back. Now you're back, John. I may have to toggle back. Well, let me ask you a question, Ed. Can you send me the agenda to my personal email? Yeah, hold on. I'll have to leave the room again. I'm sorry. But, you know, I have my phone here. I can send oh, it I to can you. forward it to him, too. Okay. I can you forward know, it. Do you, know my, my you know my personal email without me saying it over the camera? <laughs> I do. Okay, thank you. I, I set up a laptop next to me so I can get onto it, but I. But you're right, Matt. If we continue to do this, I'll have to set up dual screens. Dual screens. Yeah. Yeah. And while while we're on the phone, thanks for uh, donating the uh, microphone and speaker. Oh, oh yeah, no problem. Thank you very much, Matt. Yeah, very nice, Matt. Thank you very much for doing that. No problem, guys. Yeah, I can't really see anybody, but I'm not going to log back out and back in again. So I'm just kind of looking at the agenda on my phone. And um, is, is and your camera on there? there? Yeah, it is. Yeah, this happened before. I had to log back out and then come back on and see everybody. But that's okay. Um, I can hear you, and that's the main thing. Yeah, we um, can see you. So we can see you. Uh, yeah. So anyway, here's the scoop. Uh, we're up to um, actually new business, which is uh, COVID-19 update, COVID-19 employee plans update so uh ed i'll turn that over to you then all right thank you maureen all right COVID 19 update and uh as you're aware currently there are four confirmed cases of COVID 19 here in southampton and uh we received word that pvpc will be proceeding with uh next round or the second round of uh, funding. Our, our health director, Jerry Swanson, has sent in our uh, needs uh, and we are expecting that we will probably receive about the same amount because it's the same 200 and well, it's a new $250,000, but the amount's the same uh, that PVPC will be distributing uh, here in their Western Mass communities. So we're expecting about the same amount that we received in the first round, which is about $4,000. And then there are anticipated further rounds and other forms of funding that are supposed to come through. What about, what about the availability of tests for first responders? Is that on anybody's list? As of today, all I have heard about for tests for first responders is that they would still need to show some type of symptoms uh, to get those tests that uh, it wouldn't be automatically done like at the start of a shift or, uh, or what have you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. But over, at least for this week, it looks like there are additional testing sites and additional tests being done out there. Uh, so the volume is starting to ramp up. Uh, probably not as much as we will probably see in another week, but it is starting to increase. So the $4,000 that came in through PVPC to the town, primarily through, you know, imagine to the boards of health, um, you're saying that we're gonna expect to get another $4,000 likely. Has this been earmarked towards particular activities or supplies? The, uh, I know you read the thing last week, but I'm just wondering now that we already know that we got the money or plan to, does Jerry or uh, Charlie or anybody, have they put together a budget for how it's gonna be used? Yes, and, and uh, that was uh, sent out uh, today to Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, it's uh, in, in co conjunction with South Hadley and a other couple of other communities. Mm -hmm. uh, and at this point in time, they uh, were still looking at uh, how to, or, or to keep funding the uh, support for the MAVEN reporting uh, system, which is what we used it for in the first round. Mm -hmm. Don't we already have, don't, don't we already fund that? Well, they, because of the fact that uh, there was so much activity in it, uh, that volume has increased and now we've actually expanded upon uh, with the co co coordination with those other communities, uh, to make sure that it's being watched 24 seven and that it's all being reported back. Okay. Yeah. But it's, and it's, we are, it's, it's, it's also important to get that information out uh, to our first responders. And is right. any of the $8,000 going to be used for PPE at all or? For what? For personal protective equipment or? Not to my knowledge at this point in time, we have requested further PPE, uh, as, as you are aware, it, that is what, a, especially the N95 masks or masks in general, uh, are one of the items that seem to be in very, very short supply. Uh, at this point in time, the, shall we say, the effort seems to be getting that into uh, the healthcare network and into, into the hospitals uh, and that uh, we are secondary uh, as far as that goes and uh, MIMA has continued to suggest that we keep ordering that as much as possible from our own vendors uh, just in case it does come into stock and until so we do get some supplies from the federal national stockpile. Okay, can, can you clarify this process for me, um, please? Because my understanding is that this money is coming out of the um, a public health fund <clears throat> from the state and that the state had made the decision to funnel the money out through uh, regional planning organizations. I had a few emails back and forth with Lindsay Sabadosa to help understand um, what role Pioneer Valley Planning Commission has in the disbursement of funds and so she sent an email and clarified for me that their obligation for PVPC is to do um, epidemiological sort of like analyses of the various towns. And I think in their jurisdiction, I think there's quite a few of them, right? 20 to 30. And I so they're, yeah, they're 31. Pardon me? I think it's 31 to be exact. Right. So they basically are the, um, um, I think their uh, cut, so to speak, is 8%. And they go ahead and um, because there's 351 communities that unless you're part of a regional health district, you go through Plan Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And part of their job is to also uh, assess the needs of the individual communities. Correct. Uh, through like, an epidemiological report of some kind. So when whoever, whether it's Jerry, Charlie or whatever, when they are looking at how they're going to uh, pair up with other communities and or their choice to spend the money. Is this money that's being directed directly to the Board of Health and they're overseen by the um, Board of Health? Or is this money into the town that gets funneled over to, the, in other words, 
do we have access to the, you know, how the money's being spent so that we can oversee it as the select board? Well, the money comes to the town. Uh, okay. So, so Vicki has set up uh, an account for that. And in general, okay. theoretically speaking, it can be used by, if we got enough money, it can be used by not just uh, health department, but other, other uh, departments as well. So the police or fire could could also appeal for some funding. And right now that decision is being made by a committee of people? Yes. Uh, I mean, from, from the get-go, uh, it was start, started out that uh, police, fire, EMS, uh, myself, uh, the Board of Health, uh, and the health director were involved in putting together a basic a budget and a needs assessment. That original budget was, if my memory is correctly, about thirty or thirty-one thousand uh, mm -hmm. dollars, and and uh, they just did a second round of needs assessment. Uh, Pioneer Valley Planning actually had a uh, conference call yesterday out to uh, the various communities that would be getting this fund just to get to get some ideas. Uh, of what the communities might be looking for uh, uh -huh. and, and into the future. Uh, and, and that's what uh, uh, some of the communities talked about, not specifically knowing what the exact needs might be in a week or so, and that uh, could Pioneer Valley Planning Commission take a uh, look at possibly distributing those funds maybe on a uh, a uh, per population basis and splitting it up that way or, or some uh, uh, some other equitable way. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or any comments about the um, the um, update from Ed about funding or anything else? No. no. One, one small question. I think last week somewhere um, the fire chief put out an email, I think it was, about uh, what was happening on their end and, and also looking possibly for volunteers to make masks and things like that while waiting to see if he was going to get a shipment in. And I was just curious whether we knew anything about the status of whatever his order was, if that's, I assume, pretty separate from this, this grant thing, but something that he does through his normal channels. Do we know whether he's gotten the supplies that he's asked for? As far as I know, he hasn't gotten the, the supplies to the extent that he has asked for. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was just on TV uh, a few minutes before we started uh, where they were saying that once we have enough masks for the healthcare workers, they're going to probably recommend that everybody wear them, which yeah. is going to be interesting. Yeah, it sure will. So Ed, right now, um, is there any regular meeting weekly? I know that they were having the weekly conference calls, but is there any meeting that the select board should be a part of that is um, involves police, fire, uh, board of health and emergency planning? Not that is currently scheduled. Uh, most of us have been communicating, shall we say, remotely via emails. Yeah. Text, but if anything comes up, I will definitely let uh, the five of you know. Okay. Is anybody else feeling like, you know, there should be something on a weekly basis with the um, police, fire, board of health, or uh, emergency planner and a select board member? It, it would be a good idea, especially since everything has been extended. So uh, yeah. a, short, a short call in would be nice. Yeah, I would agree. Me too. Yeah. Okay, I'll send an email over to, uh, or if Ed, if you want to just send an email to Charlie, I think, I just think that, um, like the question that you just asked about the um, equipment for the fire department, I mean, we should, we should know where they stand. I think, um, you know, we have four cases in town right now. I just feel like we should really, um, uh, weekly updates, I mean, believe me, I'm getting bombarded with information from all over the place. It just feels like uh, I'd like to, like, hear from the police and fire or, at least have a representative um, be part of a weekly um, Southampton update. Sure, I will reach out and set that up. And okay, I, that'd be great. If, if I can ask one more thing, and if it's not appropriate to ask, you can not answer. But I'm, I'm just curious with the cases that we have in town, 
who is, ends up being responsible to do any of the contact tracing? Is that our Board of Health? Is there a public health nurse that comes to town? How does that happen? I didn't hear the question or the first part of the question. With, with the actual cases that we have in town now, I assume we might be trying to do some contact tracing and I was asking who's responsible for doing that. Well, the, I think what I meant, yeah, the- Go board ahead, Brady. Go ahead. Well, you know, what, uh, how we find out usually about the cases, like I said last time, comes in through the provider offices into that platform Maven. Right. And um, so once they identify a case, they did allow now first responders to know where the address is, you know, for the protection of first responders. But the case finding that happens is done by the Board of Health. So as a first step, the Board of Health had voted to sort of, you know, deputize all the Board of Health as health agents. So they had a meeting last week and that's, um, I think it was last week. Yeah. And so that's what they did. They made all three members of the Board of Health health agents for the purpose of being able to carry out the duties of a health agent, which would involve, at least at this point, I think ultimately the goal would be to have um, a public health nurse who would go ahead and do that case finding, who have you been in contact with? There's a whole map and tree for, for that sort of activity. And then there's reporting that goes along with that. So I'm sure that's one of the things that requires funding. And if that's what they're referring to as the extension of the MAVEN would be to allow more licenses on the MAVEN or more time, more whatever, uh, that would be completely appropriate. But it's gonna, it's, you know, that's gonna take a lot, that takes a lot of time even because everything from strep to you name it is uh, reported. So even, even without this pandemic, it's a, it's a pretty a big responsibility um, and it takes, you know, time. When I was in the Board of Health, we did have a communicable disease. We had a, um, a tuberculosis situation. And so we ended up contracting with a um, public health nurse and she, we basically turned everything over to the public health nurse who actually did all the work and then gave us a report. Well, that, that was gonna be part of my question is whether we should be thinking ahead. I know we don't have maybe the funds or maybe the need for it right now, but just thinking ahead, we don't know how, how the situation is going to evolve, but you know, could we be thinking about identifying some potential public health nurses? Yeah, I think Chris is right because by the time you know, there's a real need. There may not be anyone that we can access. It's probably I, I, worth I, an inquiry. I think that's um, part of what they're looking at. There's a medical reserve corps, and um, these are folks that are, you know, when I was in the health, we had the H1N1 thing, and we went through the entire street listing and took everybody that was an EMT, a nurse, and we actually had a number of people, we contacted them and asked them to be part of a drill uh, at the seasonal flu clinic uh, to pretend it was an H1N1 emergency dispensing. So I think um, I'm hoping that's what that's one of the reasons why I want to make sure that we have like a regular at least weekly um, meeting that involves the Board of Health and you know Charlie the chief of police and fire because I, I think that you know right now you know there is releasing funds statewide and federal wise to hopefully hopefully um, address this pandemic um, before it becomes operational budget monies and I'm hoping that that's part of what the work of the board is doing but I'm a little I'm not really sure right now so I'd like that assurance that they are looking ahead but just so you know in the 2021 budget they did put monies in for a public health nurse So I mean, request, request in, I should say. Right. So that, that's helpful information, Renee. I, and I guess my point is I just, I would like to have that regular meeting if it's weekly or whatever, just because I don't want to assume. I don't want to make, you know, yeah. I've been in too many situations where people have assumed and have been wrong, and I don't want to fall into that too. Yeah. So, Ed, if you could, if you could just reach out and, um, you know, set up something where uh, we could have our, you know, select board represent, representative and just uh, make sure that we're all kind of up on what's happening with the fire, what's happening with the EMTs, what's happening with the police. I just think that we, we should have at least weekly with the, with the f um, incredible pace of that information coming out from all over the place. Oh, you know, yeah. We shouldn't be having any questions about, you know, how the uh, EMTs are doing and do they have enough equipment? Because when I was having a communication back and forth with Lindsay about the, um, the $4,000 funds, which is frankly not very much. Um, she had said that her understanding was that the fire department was a little bit better positioned than they had been, but I didn't get anything saying that what made them in a better position. So I think that we should have regular communication. 
And the other thing, I, it'd be interesting to, to hear the status of the town, not just number of cases, but how observant we are and where, where might we put out more information so that people take better care of themselves and so on when we become aware of situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, since this is changing daily, that's a good idea. We'll set that up and I will let you know that probably the, the most important piece right now that's going out there is it's very important for people to stay at home and not to go out unnecessarily and only go out when they absolutely need to. Mm -hmm. Best absolutely. social distancing practices. Yep, absolutely. It's hard. I mean, it's uh, everything stops, but you just have to. Uh, Ed, would you like to update us on the um, employee plans update? Sure, and that's, that's part of this too. And the next thing, just to let you know that this afternoon, Governor Baker uh, did have a press conference at two o'clock and he has extended the stay at home and non-essential work order through May 4th, uh, which includes new restrictions on Airbnb and hotels. So uh, this uh, basically aligns that with the uh, public school closures and the, uh, you know, the daycare or the childcare uh, closures uh, that he announced earlier. So basically when we had approved the uh, first round of co the current work at home and uh, the current pay practice for uh, those that are working at home and non-essential employees, we did it for uh, the first two weeks uh, of uh, the governor's order. So would the board like to extend the current uh, practice for the government buildings and for the employee pay through the May 4th uh, extension? How is it working out, Ed? Seems to be working out very, very good. Uh, to be honest with you. We've got uh, some people working alternate shifts. We've got people working from home. Um, some people uh, working in, uh, working here in town hall or splitting between town hall and home. Uh, did have an IT provider in today and uh, we're, uh, I'm having a couple of uh, remote clients uh, so that some people can access their uh, additional files from home uh, rather than having to come in, which will cut down some more on, uh, shall we say, the uh, any interaction here in town hall at any particular time, probably over the last four or five days when I've been in, there might be anywhere from another three to maybe four or five people uh, or employees here in town hall. So in my opinion, that's working out very well. Work still getting done, might be getting done at a little slower pace, but uh, still moving forward. Are we getting any major concerns or complaints from the residents or? Not that I have, not that I have heard at this point. So that, that probably answers the question best. Yeah, and uh, like, I, like I say, we have been, using you know alternate methods whether they can pay online whether they can you know, just mail it in ma mail a payment in or mail uh you know something for a permit in that we can uh send back to them via mail or they uh more i see a lot of people using the uh the drop box outside not only for payments but for getting other information here How do other people feel about the um, extension? That would be basically another five weeks. Have you been getting, you know, pretty regular updates from department heads, Ed, in terms of um, people working from home, productivity, and just like sort of, is their morale okay? All of that. Mor morale seems to be good at this particular time. Uh, you know, the employees are definitely, shall we say, concerned for their home, their own and uh, fellow employees' health. So, you know, they recognize whatever that can get done uh, without a close contact with one another or can accomplish from, you know, working at home. Uh, 
that's a plus at this particular time. Just a thought, but have you given a thought to maybe having Zoom department head meetings on a regular basis to stay in contact? Well, now that we've got it up and running, and this is, of course, I don't know how many of them may have the ability to use Zoom, uh, but that is one possibility. Uh, one of the things in the uh, governor's press release or pr press conference today or briefing today uh, is uh, it looks like we can also get a 90 day free trial to go to meeting, uh, which they've reached out to offer to um, the state and municipalities in the state. So it looks like we'll have a couple of options to uh, utilize. That would be a great way to stay connected. And from my point of view, if we extend it, it seems like you need some sort of connection with these folks to, to keep the continuity. So have I, people submitted a schedule to you in advance so that you know when they'll be in the office, when they'll be home, so that you know, you're just aware? Yes, I mean, and, and when we did this, they sent in a general plan uh, as okay. far as that goes, but okay. uh, you've all been updating me on when they will be uh, you know, coming into a town hall on any particular day or coming in for a while. Okay. Are we, in, are we incurring any expenses? I mean, in terms of staying within budget, I mean, there's, awful, there's been an awful lot of furloughs and, you know, uh, people closing down and uh, are we in any, um, I mean, are we incurring additional expenses that we should be concerned about that would, or is there enough work that we would um, have to look at positions at all? Not for this particular uh, year, for fiscal year 20, the, uh, the funding was in the uh, in the budgets. Uh, there may be some overtime in uh, you know some departments, but uh, I think some of that hopefully we'll actually be able to generate reimbursement uh, reimbursements from from whether it's the state or the federal government. Uh, mm -hmm. But as of yet, I mean, there's been some incidental items that. We may not have normally purchased, whether those are disinfectant wipes, alcohol, uh, things like that, but I wouldn't say anything that would be eye-raising at this particular time. Now, what, what the impact will be in a, another week or two uh, should the curve of the outbreak still keep climbing and instead of uh, the social distancing working and keeping that down, you know, that, that possibly, you know, could change if we had to purchase, uh, whether it's N95 masks or some uh, other items and actually be able to get them and not get them through FEMA or MEMA, uh, you know, that may be something. Uh, one of the pieces of uh, that was released today by the governor is that uh, the Department of Revenue has said that um, much like in a naster, natural disaster, whether it be a tornado, uh, you know, windstorm, ice storm, or what have you, if uh, there are deficits left from fiscal year 20 from directly related to the cost of the COVID-19 uh, outbreak because we'd only be uh, only be eligible for 75% reimbursement from the federal government uh, that Dallas can be spread over three fiscal years uh, to pay those off. Does anybody have any other questions about the, um, the governor's um, decision today and also um, about our town um, and the prospect of continuing the current status till May 4th? I mean, to me, if business is getting done and Ed staying in contact with the department heads, uh, I think that's a, I don't have an issue from that point. Mm -hmm. Nor do I. How about you, Matt? I don't, I don't have an issue with it, no. Okay. I, I'm glad to see that the work's still getting done, and hopefully the um, hopefully the public and the citizens feel that we're doing the best we can because we are, and that everyone is safe. Yeah, 
Yeah. And, and, and we're doing our best to get the, yes. get the work done in continuation of government and still practice social distancing. Right. Yeah. Great. I do think it's a good idea, though, what John said is to try to have department head meetings by Zoom. And I, I think that since we're talking about department heads, I would hope and expect that everyone that's a department head would be able to manage a Zoom link and, um, and, and be part of a meeting. So that would, be a, that would be a great thing if that could happen regularly again. The communication piece is the part that actually needs to really be stepped up on. I mean, everybody has to like be able to check in and know I what's going that. on. That's when things fall apart. Yeah. And as far as Zoom goes, as long as Ed's inviting them, all they need to do is download it on their laptop right. or computer. It's free. Yeah, and it's not that hard to do, even be walked through if they're not all that computer savvy. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Do we have to take a vote on that, Ed? I imagine we do. Yeah, please. So I'll, I'll make a motion that we allow them to extend the process as we're doing now for working from home and from the office as needed. And to per, uh, follow the current uh, pay practices? And Through May 4th. That, that too, yes. Yeah. Through May 4th. Yes. Yeah, uh, and that, that can be changed mm -hmm. sooner or later, depending on the situation, yeah. Right, absolutely. Okay, John made a motion, is there a second? Second. A second. Mm -hmm. That sounds like Francine and Matt, who would like to claim it? Give it to Matt. Okay, Matt, thank you. Matt. Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor? Roland, aye. aye. Dishman, aye. Paul, aye. Martin, aye. Roden, aye, thank you. Any other um, necessary business that can't wait until the April 14th regular select board meeting? I still got some more updates. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, just, to, just to go back through some of the other current announcements, uh, Family First Act, which came out of the federal government probably about um, a week or so ago, uh, it adds 80 hours of additional paid sick uh, time to full-time employees and fewer hours to part-time employees based on their average hours worked if the employee is unable to work in person or remotely because of the following six reasons. The employee is subject to employee-related quarantine or isolation order at federal, state, or local level. A health care provider has advised the employee to self-quarantine due to COVID-19 concerns. The employee is experiencing COVID-19 symptoms and seeking a diagnosis. The employee is caring for an individual subject to the order or advice described above. The employee is caring for a child due to COVID-19 related school closure or professional child care provider unavailability. Or the employee is experiencing other sustain substantially similar conditions specified by the Secretary of Health and Human Services. So, and, and this, uh, the Family First Act uh, is in effect and uh, because of the COVID-19 outbreak and it will stay in, in effect through the end of December of 2020, at which time, unless it's renewed, uh, it will become inactive and no longer law. Well, that's very substantial. Mm -hmm. It sure is. Yes, it's an additional. It's an additional two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other updates, Ed? Yeah, uh, had had a question because, it, like I say, it looks like this is going to go through uh, at least May fourth, and then we don't know as far as trying to get caught up or anything. Uh, so I've been asked uh, what the board would like to do in regards to employees who have accrued vacation time that they may not be able to use before June 30th. Uh, would the board allow them to carry that over into fiscal year 21? And we currently have a policy of carryover no okay. carryover. No, no carryover. There's no, there's no carryover. They ask Correct. permission, and we individually, and, and we look at each case individually. Some may be allowed to carry over a week or so, depending upon it, the circumstances. It's, right. It's got to be a severe circumstance. I guess yeah, we're I don't there. think we really ever allowed that for the most part. 
No, just once in a while, the building commissioner or the accountant, but it's different or times, they, obviously. And some people have it in their contract that they can. I know that um, Vicki Ed uh, do, I think. Well, Vicki gets uh, a, a group of time. She doesn't have necessarily vacation and all that. She has, uh, what they, I forget what they call it. Ed. Is it flex time? Flex, flex time, right, yeah. Okay. But I personally think we should look at it on an individual basis. I mean, if some people want to take it off now, that's fine. If, if they can't, then I think we should look at it. It's a, it's a different time right now, so we've got to be flexible, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we have to make a decision? We don't have to make a decision right now, right? This is just to kind of think about? I mean, the, soon, the sooner the better, just so people know. Uh, but as, as I would say, as long as we know by the next uh select board meeting which is scheduled for april 14th i think that would be good so people can plan uh you know i, I know uh i did watch the governor's presser uh this afternoon and and one of his things is he was talking about uh the changes in the airbnb short-term rentals and uh the hotels is that uh, you know he did emphatically say that this is not time for vacation so yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know in some states like South Carolina, they have closed down all the hotels, resorts, beaches, and you can't go into the state unless you're a permanent resident there. So, yeah, taking a vacation now would be tough. Mm -hmm. Seems like we ought to put some time limit on it. Like in, in other places I've worked, we've done like a you know maximum one week carryover, you know, 40 hours carryover. Mm -hmm. Well, it uh, might be hard to do if somebody's got two weeks left that they saved up to go on vacation at this point in time. I mean, I mean, I might think that you might be generous enough or we might be generous enough to let them carry it over, but maybe we put the provision in there on the theory that uh, they do use it in the next fiscal year. I mean, I think their whole purpose of not doing carryover is so that you have a stable budget. So you're not having like all of a sudden, you know, four weeks or three weeks, you know, of uh, of coverage. So anyway, I would like to add it to the 14th of April agenda personally. Yeah. Sure. Is there any way that we could get an idea of uh, the amount of vacation time that's outstanding? I mean, that would put it in perspective for us. I can see what I can find out. And it could, do, wouldn't have to be one or the other. It could be carryover and or payout or a little bit of both. Mm. Well, depending the, on the circumstances. The payout will affect the budget. I mean, right. you have I know. to take the yes. time. I, no, I, I would almost put a restriction where they can't take more than a week or two at a time so that we don't have a long stretch where we need to cover it. But, right. uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I mean, these are very unusual circumstances. I wouldn't want to disadvantage everybody. I mean, I had a vacation. I'm supposed to be in California right now, frankly. And I'm now uh, scheduled to go in October. So I think if I didn't have that certainty, if I, you know, I think that would be really hard to do. So I think that it's, um, I'm, you know, certainly understand their circumstance, but I also, you know, have an obligation to understand how that would impact the budget. So if you can get us some information about that, Ed, I think that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Will do. Okay. So what else, Ed? Okay. Uh, lastly, just to let you know that the uh, CARES Act, which is the latest one to come down from the uh, government, uh, that's the one that uh, is authorizing small business loans and also has a provision for uh, unemployment insurance adjustments to the state for individuals that might not normally be covered from unemployment. Uh, mm -hmm in the particular states. And I know on the, uh, the small business loans end of things, uh, from what I've looked at, it's a, it's a very long document, but um, looks like it uh, will address some of the needs of small businesses that are being heard at this particular time. I know on the unemployment end of things is, uh, individual states, including Massachusetts, are currently looking for some guidance uh, back to the federal government for uh, what the instances of adjustments for uh, people that are not uh, no normally uh, uh, 
uh, covered uh, might be uh, so that they have clarification on that before they uh, start accepting uh, those unemployment claims. Wow. And that's all I've got. Any questions about the CARES Act? I've been sort of following that, you know, work-wise anyway. So, but um, if it's new to anybody, did anybody want to ask any questions about it? Okay. <clears throat> um, is there any other agenda items that can't wait until uh, April 14th? No. Okay. Yeah, I would, so we I have just I'm sorry. Just Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I just wanted to understand. Uh, I know, Ed, you said you've got this license for us now. Do you have just some thoughts about how you would like to proceed with other committees that do want to meet? No, not at this particular time. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is look at that uh, possibility for go to meeting to move, move forward uh, because rather than maybe uh, buying another license for Zoom for some separate committees, we may be able to access that for free. Are there any committees, Ed, that want to still meet in person? No. Oh, no. No. I don't think so. <laughs> I would hope not. Yeah. No, I don't think so. No, it's just some that, that need to do normally, like their public hearings, right. like CONCOM and public um, planning board and so forth, that I think would. And, you know, I was hoping that we could just, you know, whatever your, your license, your password is, that we could just, you know, either have you schedule those meetings or pass the password to the head of the meeting to schedule their own meeting. But if you're not right. comfortable doing that. Yeah, we, we can do that. Like I say, the, the first uh, fallback will be, or the first uh, recommendation will be Zoom and maybe we sit uh, like the planning board or CBA or conservation, which uh, may have some timelines to it, use the Zoom and look at the possibilities to go to meeting for some of the others. Uh, right now, that as far as I know, the legislation, which looks like it will eventually pass uh, that would actually delay the statutory timelines on permit uh, issued by like the planning board, conservation, or CBA. Uh, it, to my knowledge, it still has not passed, but uh, it looks like it uh, will eventually pass. And that, if it goes through as it was originally proposed, would actually extend all those timelines uh, to 45 days after the COVID-19 outbreak uh, is over um, so that they don't become automatic approvals if the particular boards or committees don't act in that time frame. Okay, well, that, that's good to hear. Any other business um, that can't wait until the next select board meeting? Does anyone have any suggestions for agenda items that uh, they would like to um, make in terms of the next select board meeting? There's a lot of things on hold, unfortunately, but does anybody have any requests? No. no. Nope. I, I guess my concern right now is we're in the middle of the budget season um, yeah. involving, you know, finance committee and 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 others and 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 boards and committees that are you know involved in the budget making process how, how are we going to get that we, well, we really do need as chris suggested we really need to have a forum for people to meet to, to meet share. yeah meet virtually you're correct yeah because we're not getting any extension on our fiscal year i'm sure uh actually it looks like we will oh ah. Whether we want to go that way or not, uh, it does look like uh, that's going to be a strong possibility. Okay. But I don't want to fall back to that if we don't have to either. No, no, we still need to have a plan regardless of when that fiscal year, next fiscal year starts. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> um, Ed, have there been any town residents that have contacted Town Hall with uh, any assistance needs either through the um, Senior Center or uh, through your office? None that I am aware of. Okay. <clears throat> I just want to bring everybody's attention to the um, email from Cindy Palmer. She is um, in the Almeters Committee, 
And just to remind people, I'm not going to read the whole email, but it basically says to town officials and community leaders that there is a fund that's been uh, in a place for 120 years. And it's basically to help people uh, that are going through very difficult times. And so there is information available and there are funds available if, um, for a one-time sort of need. And there's, it's all 100% confidential. It doesn't go through the select board. It simply goes through this uh, Almoner's um, committee. So um, if anybody is interested or ha has uh, anybody that um, may be interested in this, they can um, contact the uh, Almoners at almoners at mytowngovernment.org. So anyway, it says maximum expenditure generally does not exceed $1,000. So anyway, if you know anybody that has a, um, a unique need, we wanna make sure that we can help them out any way we can. So I, I think then we're up to um, warrants. Okay. One other thing, maybe, uh, maybe thinking about the next meeting, is there a chance to get the update if there's any status report on the needs of seniors, especially people who are living alone? Not, not specific information about individuals, but to try to understand because there are many, uh, several people have gotten in touch with me and asked about ways in which they could help. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand that that can't be an official town thing, but as a group of volunteers, people can, can work together um, if they choose. Yeah, when I saw the newsletter for the senior center, I was a little disappointed. I thought that, that why, you know, clearly could be something people could do remotely. They just, there was this decision not to have a newsletter for the month of April, I believe. It seems like um, if a lot of those newsletters go out electronically, um, or even if it's not, that might be, have been a source of, you know, please call this number if you have any, because they have a database of all the seniors right. in town. Right, and, and, and I know that they've been outreaching to people, but, and that's why I think it, it, to, to let people know perhaps maybe what's being done and also let people know ways in which they might help if they want to help and what's, what's actually going on. But I'll be happy to stands. liaison okay. to the senior center. I'd be happy to reach out to just Janet okay. and um, Joan and find mm -hmm. out if we can get some kind of a, you know, report on um, have our people calling in. Have they been reaching out? What 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 are the needs that they're hearing Certainly. about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. All right. So warrants. All right. We're looking at. Warrant P20-38 for $290,768.20. A payroll deduction warrant PD20-38 for $47,788.32. PD20-38A for $168,014.34. And W20-39 for $816,476.58. Any questions about the warrants? No? Okay, I'm just actually bringing back up my agenda. Somebody who has it in front of you, can you just tell me what's next after all the warrants? Other Are documents. Yeah. Are there Which any we already did. documents for signature, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was minutes to approve, but we don't have any, and then pending items. Um, any uh, any um, updates or questions on the pending items? No. Yeah, Ed, you brought up last time, because. We we're trying to get that dog complaint and stuff like that off the agenda for you to handle, but you said there was a new update on that. Uh, where, where is that now? Do we need to uh, react to it? Yeah, I'm uh, just trying to figure out how we can actually have the public hearing for that under the, under the current circumstances and the need to meet virtually rather than in person. So I'll follow up with that. Is, is it a serious issue or is it just an annoyance uh, for one of the neighbors? Well, an annoyance for one of the neighbors, I would say, is a you know, serious issue. Uh, so. You know what I mean? It's not, a, it's not an animal out there biting everybody all the time. No, but this has been going on for a while. So yeah. it's 
Yeah. It's a new dog, if I remember correctly. Correct. Yeah. But it's the same person who's registering the complaint, only the person that's um, there uh, having issue is, is the same neighbor, but a different dog? That is correct, yes. Same neighbor, different dog. Do, same do you know if, same neighbor. And the police have been out there a couple of times. Do you know if they uh, don't have the original dog? No. Or is that not the issue right now? That this, did they get rid of the original dog that had the problems? They got another dog and this isn't a problem also? Or do they have two yes. dogs? No, we were, uh, this is a new dog. The original one's gone. All right. That doesn't sound like a good choice in dogs. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the, the problem's a dog. So um, what's happening with dog licenses? I assume nothing is. So it would be helpful for us to know whether the current dog that's causing the problem is licensed in Southampton. Do you know if that's true? I don't. I can check. And okay, today, was, today was the last day you could apply for it. You should be completing your license application. Yep, 331. Mm-hmm. So, Ed, if you can actually check, because all that's done by the mail now. Well, most sure. of it is. Yep. Okay. Anything else on the pending list? It's, it's pretty, you know, light right now anyway. Yeah. No. Okay. So, no. Um, I don't imagine there's anybody on the call, but if there are, I see Tammy there. Any, any um, open time for the public? Would anybody from the public like to um, ask a question or participate? We're still doing it but via email, Rini. What's that? We're still doing We're it only by email? Yep. Okay. And can, I, did can, not, I did not get any emails. Um, did you, Ed, from anybody from last meeting? No. Okay. Maureen, can you hear me? I can. It's Lucy. Hi. How Hi. are you? Good. That's my ceiling up there. Sorry. <laughs> um, that's your what there? Far, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Here. Okay. Bring, bring your camera. Dog, what? Bring your camera down so people it can be recorded. Because you need uh, to identify you need to identify yourself and all here. that. Okay. Well, here's my hand. I don't want to put my face on camera because I'm not in the best looking place right now. But, um, anyways, I, um, the dog licensing. I am not, you know, gonna crucify people if they didn't get them in by today you know as long as by june 1st after june 1st is when we start charging the late fee so mm -hmm. um we'd like them to be in by today but you know given the yeah. events that are happening around us i mean i'm gonna give people a leeway i would hope that they wouldn't take advantage of that they are coming in by mail and i am being very careful with processing them i am processing them right now I'm up to 400, and as far as the dog that was uh, involved in the hearing from two years ago, I don't think it's the same dog. I, like you said, I think it's a new dog, and I think there's an even more problem with that um, resident. Okay, if, actually, so. if you could just, uh, you and Ed could have a conversation, if you can check to see if the dog that's uh, the problem right now is currently registered, and then yeah. what we'll do is we'll add that to the agenda, maybe to the next um, select board meeting. But it would be helpful for us to know, and I thank you. I appreciate the uh, delay for folks uh, on the licensing. That makes total sense. So yeah, thanks for letting us know about that. Yeah, I mean, I okay. I don't want people to freak out. Like you know, they're gonna yeah. get fined. So yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Lucy. Is there any? Yep. Um, so I don't think there was any other um, emails or um, public comment from the last meeting. So um, so at that particular point, we'll go into executive session. Hey, Maureen, uh, before, you, before you do that, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. If people are able to come into the Zoom meeting and during public sessions speak to us, wouldn't that be okay to be allowed? That'd be the same as being at a regular meeting. I, I personally don't have a problem with it so long as they can identify themselves right. um, in some way that uh, it's clear that they're who they say they are. Yeah, if they're on camera and they identify themselves, yeah, Lucy, we know. Hi. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, Lucy, we know. But um, for other people, um, sure. I, 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 Ed, is there any kind of um, directive about this um, in terms of uh, the public? I know that there was a lot of attention paid to how the public can be part of meetings, but 
Uh, no, this was uh, originally how it was uh, set up because we didn't know how it would work out. And I am going to get some feedback from uh, the East Hampton City Council because they're about to try their first meeting uh, with taking live comment versus the, uh, the mail or the email. So I'll let you know how that comes out. Okay. Okay. And I, I just want to, I was on the call with, um, with Jen and with Peg Conniff from East Hampton uh, City Council today as we walk through this process. And I need to thank them for their help because I think they were, um, they gave us a lot, of, a lot of good information, a lot of good tips. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's great. Absolutely. I've got to say this one worked out a lot better than last week. So thanks for oh, setting yes. it up. I will yeah. say that. Yes, I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Okay, are we all ready to go into executive session? Yeah, you want to read the reason? Yep, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Number 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, shared building commission or contract. So if we could have a motion to go into executive session, and we will not be returning to open session. So move. Second. So we all have to leave right now, whoever's watching, correct? Once we vote. We have a separate okay. link anyway. Yeah, we're okay. all leaving. Yeah, okay. we have a separate link. Um, okay. So I heard, I believe, was it Francine and then John yes. or Matt? Yes. yes. Uh, I didn't hear that. Was it Francine and then Matt? No, no. Francine and John. Yeah. Okay, John. Okay, good. All right, so the roll call vote. Tishman, I. Falls, I. Roland, I. Martin, I. Uh, Groden, I. All right, thanks. So we'll see you in a couple of minutes with the... Um, the other executive session Zoom link. Okay, goodbye everybody, yes. be safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.